In your harsh and unforgiving homeland, the midnight sun has risen. The time has come to take to your boats and plunder weaker and verdant lands to the west. For more than a week, all of the tribes of the Andrigals have made the voyage to the coast of a land called Albion in its eastern reaches. You strike at night. The enemy warriors don't see you. Foolishly, their shrine is lit. And you can hear the mewling droning like women as they make uh, petitions to their weak god of light. The cliff face is high. But if you can overcome that, you can unleash your fury into the halls of this foreign god. Claim their treasures as yours and the glory of battle. I think I have to place your tokens though. Um, except John, you should be able to see, but I'm gonna make, Yeah. I'm going to make one for everybody else real quick here. Mm. Oh, is that because I sent you the files? Yeah. What's, what's... I'll just make some duplicates here real quick. Now, this one token represents um, like all of your four characters, right? So let's see, starting with Alex, I'll make you an owner. Oh, excuse me. And represents Seawolf copy. This is going to be Steve. And lastly, and actually, you all are on the near side of the cliff face. This is going to be your first obstacle to kind of overcome. Um, uh, Steve and Alex, can you all see your tokens? I uh, I believe so. Let me see if I can move it. I think I have the right button pressed. I'll kind of pan you all over here just to make sure. Yeah, I can and see my tokens. Great, great, great. And then lastly, um, Caleb. Now you all can like get some custom line art Viking pictures later and send it to me if you want. I'll put it in kind of for your main character, whoever you're going to play during the adventure initially. All right, so everybody should be able to see this boat and uh, where it says 60 foot cliffs and kind of the terrain and some lights. Is that uh, is that true? Oh wait, no, you don't. No, you, don't. you don't have you don't have vision. That's what it is. I'm going to grant you all vision. Alright, now, does everybody see it? Uh, what would we be seeing? I see I see just these uh, lights out there and around the boat, nothing else. Is yeah, you should, you should just see around the boat and then uh, some lights, and I'll describe what that is and why you see it here in a second. Right. Okay, that looks good. All right. Okay. <clears throat> so, uh, Caleb, Steve, you guys can see uh, see the boat and see the lights. Mm -hmm. All right. This is a, uh, a cliff face, sixty feet high, uh, around uh, the base of this. Now, it's clear to you that the inhabitants of this uh, this shrine of this god uh, they do not know you're here. You have not lit anything, and. <clears throat> As I was saying, they're foolish in that you can actually see where they are. Uh, you can see the lights and you can hear them chanting in the night. What do you do? Gerd, a man by the name of Gerd, also known as Mudman, steps forth and he is likely the strongest man in the crew. And he produces 60 feet of rope and takes from one of his companions a grappling hook. And he quietly, he presents it to the rest of 
the crew and quietly says, uh, this will hold our weight, and it appears that I have just enough rope to reach to the top. Is there any man who would throw this up there? About a god of this steps forward. He's a, a tall, wide man with a, with a big head, but a very small face that kind of is, is somewhere in the center. And he just reaches out his hands. I will throw this. Now this, this dexterity check that you're about to do um, is just going to be whether or not they ridicule you. So this is your first attempt. <laughs> Nice. Uh, you throw it, and you can actually hear it like perfectly clink, like into the into something like, and it's just perfectly like jabbed into it. And you yank down on it like really hard, and uh, the rope just goes taut. Uh, there's no give. You're absolutely certain that it could bear everyone's weight. Gerd congratulates him on the throw and then he turns to the other crewman and says which one of us shall be the first up the cliff who is bravest here among us everybody rushes forward at once <laughs> <laughs> one at a time one at a time a woman runs to the front oh nice I'm hot to... and I will climb first to show you how it's done all right, um, so it's it's a DC 12. Um, yeah, and it's just a regular check. Now, uh, it's 60 feet, so if she falls, she'll fall 3D6. Uh, yeah. Oh no. <laughs> she starts climbing. Uh, everybody else can uh, can attempt this check as you start climbing up to... Um, yeah, this will just be for one, just for one of your, you'll do this for kind of your lead. Everybody else will make it. Uh, it's just a straight check. Yeah. A, a de dexterity DC 12 dexterity check. Uh, that's different. All right. Got a plus one to this. Let's hurt. Hope Gerd doesn't die on the first go. Oh no. <laughs> uh, oh, a 10. <laughs> We're, we're not good at this. <laughs> the Vikinging is going badly so far. All right. So this is what happens. Uh, so everybody makes it up. Um, most people make it up. But um, but um, it is perilous. And uh, you have no time to even concern yourself with the people that have broken their spines at the base of the cliff. Uh, if you're going to destroy and loot this place, you need to do it now. You're down to nine. Oh, and actually, you have uh, you have some followers with you because you had another player. All right, it's dark ahead, but you can see the outline of a of a building. Now, uh, this is clearly a a window, a large, broad uh, window with bright colors uh, that uh, that comes from the uh, the light from within. Uh, you can also see that there doesn't appear to be a window for these two lights. They seem to be uh, flanking something. I don't need to remove any characters, do I? Uh, no, yeah, we, you know, we could do that okay. later, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Alright, where do you all go? What do you do? And, uh, oh yeah, uh, everybody roll a, a dexterity uh, check for initiative. And you'll have to tell me what you got, because right now this is like Sea Wolf, Sea Wolf, you know, so. Wow. I, I, Caleb, have gotten a 16. Caleb got a 16, alright. 
What about everybody else? I have a 19. 19, okay. I, uh... I honestly have no idea which of those rolls was mine. Uh, it was either the 16 or the 10. So I guess I'm the 10. Uh, yeah. Okay. I think I got the 9. Oh, okay. All you right. can change your character's name if you need to. On the sheet. All right. <clears throat> so, uh, John, make a call. What's the group doing? You do have torches, I if whatever you're... So you could just light it up, or you could try to sneak, you know, whatever you want to do, you know. I was thinking about heading toward the biggest light. All right. Okay. Um, you do that, you head toward the biggest light, and um, uh, you can see from within um, that uh, there is a man in here now. I'm not putting you inside, but from where you are, you would be able to see inside, okay? Uh, so I'm going to move you in there just so you can see. That's weird. You should be able to... Let me make it brighter in here. Okay, so... Also, I've crowded you all in, sorry. Now he's stuck. So, <clears throat> you see this, uh, this old man who's portly and bald counting monies in a room by himself. And a beautiful stained glass window in front of it. Candles lit all around him. The door behind him closed and locked. What do you do? You all are on the outside. How big is this window? Twice the height of a man. It's or ornate and gorgeous. And it's on, on, like, we could jump through it. What do you want to do? Like, what is it you're trying to accomplish? You know, like, it sounds like that if that door is locked, everyone, maybe we go in a different direction and we leave a couple of our, a couple of our men here to try to catch that guy if he flees through the window. That's true, yep. That sounds good. All right. I, I like will it. take some tokens here, and I will uh, copy them to represent uh, two of your people. Uh, we could. I don't know if this would make sense. Uh, we could, if we're afraid of him fleeing, I feel like alerting everyone in this facility would be a bad idea. But I do have a bow and arrow. And it... Would it be? Would it make sense to just smash a little hole in this uh, this stained glass window and shoot the dude before he has any time to go run for help? And then just we this room's taken care of, and we can come back to it when it's time to clean up. Does anybody else have a bow and arrow? I do. I'll have a short bow, yeah. Okay, I'll say uh, you know if one of you smashes the window and the rest of you have your weapons ready to fire from the darkness. Then the answer is yes, and it will be loud. There is a chance that you'll be heard. There's a chance. Yeah, not that loud. What do we think? I would definitely be down to do it because I doubt the other, I doubt the other persons living here at this establishment are counting their coins at this hour. I'm just one. I just don't yeah. want this one guy mm -hmm. counting his money to, to run away. And besides, the window, the, you know, his door's locked. It's not like anyone's gonna find out what happened. Is it stained glass? Yes. So I wonder, because if it, if it's like that soft lead stuff, we might be able to slowly, if we're really careful, kind uh, of cut some away, and then that would make it easier to push the like a, a small piece of glass in, and then everybody can fire through that. Like if there's a wider one, it'd be slightly less noisy. All right, you can do that, John. You make the call. What's the plan? Is it to move yeah, on? You're going to... All right, task chain then. Good. So, uh, Steve, your character can attempt to do that with a dexterity check. Um, yeah, just and it's a DC 12. And if you succeed, then uh, it'll be quiet when you fill this guy with arrows. Ooh, drum roll. Nice. Hey. Nice. All right. slowly peel back the metal uh, and uh, you're able to even take a segment out this is what works really well you have this beautiful stained glass it looks like magic like somehow like these bright colors you put the glass down 
and you you motion for the people with the arrows to move up. Anyone with a bow and arrow can roll to hit. What's the damage on that? Uh, D6. I think it's a D4, actually, but let me just say it's a D6. D6. I'm not going to look it up. Okay. Natural 20. Ooh. Look All at right. that. You can roll double damage. That hits. That does not hit. Nope. Ooh. 10 damage. Or 9 damage, sorry. And you rolled double? Yeah, doubled. All 2D6. Right. Okay, so, um, <clears throat> yeah, you, uh, Seawolf, somebody rolled, who rolled a 12? That would be me. Did you roll, and you, did you roll your damage? I did not, should I? Yes, you can, you can do both whenever you're doing an attack. Well, ah. by all means. Okay, uh, yeah. Street, right there. So, you strike him in the, in the gut, he bowls over, and then, um, uh, I think that the two arrows from uh, Alex, your characters, you just get him right in the larynx, and he's he's silent as he gurgles slightly as he falls back, crashes into the floor, and uh, your way in is secured. All right, and he's he's very quiet, but my archer scowl just like just bump into the air and like you know visibly psychs himself up. Oh, yes. And uh, on the night, boys, it's good. Very yeah, good. I will give a luck token to uh, Steve and to uh, John and to well, everybody gets a luck token. You get a luck token. Oh, okay, remember, a luck token. You get, more, you get more if you don't spend it, you won't get any. You only have one at a time. Oops. All right, so he's he's dead in here. I'll describe what you see in here. You see, um, and no one else, you can hear people chanting down the halls. Uh, beyond this locked door. Um, you can even hear people walking and talking among the halls. Even late at night, it seems they are awake. Um, there's a, a heavy oaken desk in this place and uh, a sheaf of letters uh, near the desk. And besides that, a large offering plate full of gold coins. What do you do? Uh, the next person is Caleb. Ah, oh, well, I think that this room seems accounted for for now. I think we should circle around the premises a bit more. Look at other, look for other entrances. You're gonna leave yeah. all the stuff and then like try to it's clear it anywhere. Or... Yeah, yeah okay. we gotta cover the exits. Gotcha. All right. I'm more, I'm more afraid of running than fighting back. I'm gonna all check right. the guy's body to see if he has a key on him. He does. Form, who's a rather short, thin man, kind of goes up and starts listening at the at the door. Nice. Uh, let's see here. Um, you hear somewhere faintly down the hall and to your left. Uh, you hear uh, people uh, laughing and joking and talking about something and the clatter of something that they're handling, as far as you can tell. You hear sh muffled shuffling around on the floors. Um, yeah. All right, he turns and looks at the party with a deadly serious face. Her can hear them laughing. <laughs> Gerb produces the key that he picked off the man's body and says, uh, if we're looking for a clean entrance, seems we now have one. All right. What do you do, uh, Caleb? You're the caller. Make a call. Ah, well, it seems like we've gotten really interested in this door. So, well, if we want to, we can we can open it up. See what's on the other side. Open it up. It does appear like the hallway is lit. The door opens outward and to the left. You go Can we into hear the... which direction those chants are coming from on the hallway? Yes, uh, you hear uh, uh, the chants coming further in somewhere off in this direction, but it's further away. But you hear voices somewhere down the hall to the left. Oh, those chants must be their warriors. They must be preparing for battle. 
group. We should surround them, give ourselves the best chance. Yes. Gerb votes that we move to the left, try to catch out whoever it is that's separated from the rest. All right. Uh, still on Caleb. Make it so. Very well. You uh, to the left. You enter and head to the left, and then you hear. Um, this actually should have more light. I apologize. Um, and see, uh, people. Uh, there's a, a scullery, and uh, you hear uh, in, a, in a foreign tongue, ah, the oh, the light protect us, and like he drops something and it shatters, and uh, they start to run. Run after them. Oh, uh, Koki throws his uh, his war axe. Roll to hit. Go for it. Ooh, it's, uh, Anybody else that wants to try to do that, uh, you can do it. Ooh, An arrow is let loose from the bow. Hey! I don't uh, have confidence in my dexterity skills. Alright. Uh, yeah, you both hit, and um, you you silence them. They, they One of them um, is hit in the chest and moans as he falls against the wall, his blood smearing against the back wall. The other one hits in the, the back of his, his neck, and he dies instantly and simply falls to the ground. Um, you hear shuffling in the room nearby as there's a commotion. It seems like people are coming to investigate. Toki uh, pulls out his war axe, and he kind of leans down beside the guy's body and goes, shh, and then stands yeah. beside the door. Yeah, let's, like let's get on set up on the sides of the door. Yeah. Like, like here? Like when I come through, we're going to be beside is the it, door. Okay. Is it this way that they're coming from? Yeah, you you do hear them. So yeah, you can you can do that. Uh, there's no door here, uh, so. Oh. All right. No one has spears, right? No. Nope. All right. So uh, they uh, they come running in to figure out what's going on. They have no idea what happens, uh, and they just come running into your blades. Yes. Yeah. These are people in brown robes uh, with bald heads, some of them young. Could we, so they're not dangerous, could yeah. we incapacitate them oh. for future murder? Uh, yeah. Oh, okay. Just throwing it out there. Saying. Our axes have blunt sides. Do some bonking. Yeah, any objections to bonking? Oh, I'm okay bonk. with bonking them. We would like I, to bonk them. I rolled okay. too early. Uh, there's a chance you might kill them. I'll base it on the damage. No, go for it. All right, seven misses, though. Uh, and remember, you can roll for all three of your oh, levels. Can I use a luck token? Yeah, are absolutely. We, are we down to three people each? Uh, yeah, because one of each one of each of your peoples died in the, the fall down uh, the cliff. Ah. Uh, luck luck token has 26. Uh, no, you, uh, you can roll with advantage. You get to roll twice and take the highest. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, all right. Last thing we hardly knew you. Ah, there we go. There's oh, one that's incapacitated right there. Uh, what else we got? Anybody else? One more hit after this. Those are two that are right. very One of them's high. unconscious with that hit, so that's good. What else we got? We got a four... That's a... I gotta, I gotta figure all this out here. That looks like a 9 right there, a d6 plus 4. This dude is dead. Alright, so, you got a dead guy, you knock two unconscious. Uh, one of them looks like he might be permanently damaged, but he is alive. And the other one, uh, you can tell that you've put him into a, uh, a trauma-induced sleep. What do you do now? Uh, uh, the next, this is still... Uh, Alex, Alex, you're the caller for this. Hmm. I think we should. We're, we're making really good progress here, and nobody seems alerted. Maybe we should take on that room full of the room that we think their warriors are in with the chanting. Yeah. All right. Uh, oh yeah, and this should have a light in it. This place should be better lit. I apologize. Um, okay. Uh, so you head back down the hall. Yes. Very well. Start heading back down the hall. 
and you come to a, uh, you can't see it here, but there's a door here. You can see also a, a window here that's lit and you can see out in the, it looks like a dark courtyard from where you can, from where you can see. What do you do? You can hear her chanting. It's definitely uh, loud and over here uh, on the other side of this door. What if was... we put out this excess window light here? I feel like that's not helping us. All right, you put out the uh, the candlelight in the window. Yep. All right. Perhaps if we sure. donned these strange robes, uh, they might think we are one of their warriors. You think these men to be warriors? They fell so easily. Uh, but the chanting ones, they may be uh, wizards. Hmm. wizards. <laughs> I'll keep my garb on. I think we should bring these men down as quick as possible. Waste no time. Yeah, let's kick the door in and, and charge them. If you want right. to wear their brown, their brown one-piece skirts, though, you're, you're more than welcome. <laughs> <laughs> the, the two of them look, and then Vorn right. looks at the, the two that are looking, and he just kind of shakes his head like, mm, and they go, okay. Alex is still the, the caller. You get a luck token for saying that, and then do you kick the door <laughs> in, or do you just open it and start to stride in? It's not open locked. It. I think we should open it, and then if they're there, we'll awesome. rush. It looks dimly lit with candles in places on, on pillars. There's statuary along the walls. You can even see that among the statuary are various uh, golden objects. This is just from when you open the door. No one seems to react when you quietly open the door. What do they look like, the chanters? Well, it's dark inside. You do need to give it some more light, though. It needs more light than this. Uh, from where you are, it's dark, though. There we go. That's a little better. It's this. It would, it's clear to you that this is a big, long hall, though. And there are these big pillars. And set within the wall and niches in the wall are statuary. And uh, among the statuary are golden objects and things of value and stuff. And uh, bowls and candles. There are candles everywhere in here as well. The, uh, the people facing our way or the other direction? Uh, they, you don't see anybody. It's dark from where you just open the door and you see this when you open the door. So you would need to go inside, I, I guess, or, or scout ahead or something. From where you are, you can hear them, but you can't see them. Let's see, Toki's very can sneaky. You guys want to? Can do, we? Uh... Do we speak the the same language as these people? Or in this in this case, right? I'll say you can speak their language. Yeah. You can understand them. Right. In that case, I'd like to say, I'd like to cut, cut my, cut my head, cut my hands around my mouth and say, "Oh, help!" Bait them out. Yeah. Yeah. Bait them out. Um, the the oh, chanting. God, goes. <laughs> you, you get a luck token for that, uh, and uh, they the the chanting stops, and you hear murmuring, and they're like, "Oh, what's happened? What's happened?" And then like people are in fact stopping whatever they're doing and they come out uh, into this uh, doorway now just for the sake of seeing what's going on I'll give you light here uh, and they run into the doorway like a bunch of doofuses to figure out what's going on what do you do Ooh. kill bull <laughs> maybe we could ask them to surrender and then bonk them if they don't mm, Gerb's gonna grab one yeah. of them by the by the neck the one that's running into us and he's going to try to cover the man's mouth all right you do that you cover one of them uh the are going going. Through us. they uh these two uh fall to their knees uh and start begging something called the light which they speak to as a person light protect us please oh light no light please and they just fall to their knees yeah, begging. Seems to be doing like a poor job. Yes, I think let's let's start. Let's pull some, rip some sheaths off their sheaths of cloth off their robes and gag these guys. They're they're being too noisy. Um, you hear the noise of something coming 
further from ahead and seems to have noticed you and what the noise. But yeah, you uh, rip something off nearby, no problem, and you silence them and gag them. What do you do now? Uh, the next caller is Steve. Ooh. Somebody's coming, you said? Mm hmm Well, let's pull these guys, uh, pull these guys in to, uh, like, somewhere over here. And then, uh, try to lure, lure that guy out and scare him. Really for no other reason, just, just to scare the guy. You, what, what? What are you trying so to do? To, 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 to drag these guys, right? Yeah. Quickly drag them over here. Okay. Out of the, out of the way. And then uh, when that other guy kind of runs out, um, there's, Wah! <laughs> okay. And then grab him too. You hear the clanking of metal uh, as, some, as something runs towards you. And uh, they do not run out into the open, but instead form a wall. And they say, uh, they, they see you and they say, Intruders! By the power and order of the light and, and his holy eminence, Surrender your weapons now. No, thank you. Just closes the door. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Get a luck token for that. <laughs> All right. Uh, the next caller is uh, John. You only have moments to act. Uh, you gave it to me at the four time. Uh, okay. Uh, I, I don't know. What, anybody have a plan? I, uh, a courtyard. We can access any part of this facility from the darkened courtyard. We can flank them. Yeah, we can try that. All right. Like um, this will be a contested uh, uh, dexterity check to try to do it. Um, you have to beat a... F uh, let me see here. Actually, or you can use strength. You have to beat an eight. And uh, this will be this will be John since he's calling right now. Roll a strength check. Yeah, we're dead. Oh. All right. Um, some of you make it, but um, but that's the worst amount of us to make it. Yeah, you you sort of stagger, and these uh, these armored figures they um, uh, they. They enter the hall, and uh, they demand, they say, Cowards, do not flee. Turn and fight. And uh, they uh, they form up in this hallway. So you call us cowards, and you stand there out of our reach. Yeah, you're standing outside of face-stabbing range. They uh, gladly oblige to get in face-stabbing range. Can I, can I throw cow drops on the ground in front of them before yeah. they enter face-stabbing range? It's too late. Um, no. Let's see here. It's Just quicker. so that you can see what's going on, I'm going to put a bunch of light here because I think they would have it. Um, but here we are. Uh, the next person able to act is Caleb. So, yes, actually. Ah, yes, you could. Good. They're, they're wasting hands holding torches. I would like to throw cow drops in front of them. <laughs> All right, you uh, you drop a bunch of, of stuff on the floor uh, to to slow them down. Uh, what's your intention? What are what are you trying to ultimately do? Uh, my hope is that they will be harmed. Oh, okay. Perhaps yeah. contract fitness. All right, they will make a save. All right. Uh, Maybe let's maybe up their formation if that's useful at all. You you can also move. So in combat, you can move and act, and that's it on one turn. Um, and you can always do like minor actions too, but uh, anyways, uh, I want the glory. The monsters oh. they, or in this case these foreigners, they move up and they're going to make some saves. Eighteen, fourteen, fourteen, eighteen. They all pass. Oh. Well, it's not a complete waste. This one they have fails. been getting called foreigners, which, this like, you fails. know, what are they doing in this land? That one passes. 
All right. So actually, you you managed to cause a, a, a absolute disaster with all these remaining monks, and they have fallen and just caught and die you know, in, amongst this, these caltrops. Uh, one of them survives, though. The last surviving wow. monk of this place. Anyways, the they move the up, freak. and they're going to attack. Um, two of them are going to attack Johns. Can I shield ball? Uh, only after your turn. Okay. There's a twelve hit. AC twelve. AC twelve. Okay. Uh, you take uh, three damage for one of your uh, level zeros, and two damage for the same one or another one. And then the other one's gonna attack, who's this right here? Who's uh, who's this, uh, this is Caleb, I think. I don't know. I was nearby, throwing cow drops, as one does. Natural 20. Oh, oh. oh no. Which means they're gonna roll another D8. With a bastard sword. Well, it could be worse. The sword could have legitimate parentage. One of your people is decapitated. Their head oh, flies no. off their body. Which one? There are three of them. You can pick. Oh no! <laughs> That's uh, cool. Yeah, what have you done for me there's lately? A, there's a 13 hit. Uh, it depends who they're attacking. No, it doesn't. Uh, you can you can pick who they of, of your it, people. It totally hits. Okay, uh, and then one of your remaining two survivors takes two damage. Okay, um, that is their turn. Right. Uh, let's yeah, actually he moves. Uh, but he can't do anything. He just yells, and he's like, he's like, um, uh, he, he's like, uh, what do they call it? Um, heretics, infidels, unbelievers, be gone from this holy place, and just starts yelling. Um, and it's Alex's turn. Yes, all of those things. I bleed <laughs> all over him. We sound ten. like women. <laughs> can our can my it seems my guys are ending up are furthest away from the front of this. Do we have to do we have to kind of bide our time? Wait for the others that are in front? Or can do you I do you have attacks? a spear or do you have a ranged weapon? We have a sing my guys have a single bow. All right, 5e rules apply. You can if you see it, you can shoot it. All right, taking the shot then. And one of his guys step up to replace my dead guy. <laughs> Uh, that, is it just a raw 13? Just a raw 13. That misses, but you have two more people. I only, have, only got one bow between them, so I guess I got I got no more attacks this round, I guess. Very well. And Caleb, did you act on your turn with all of your people? I just threw Caltrops. Okay. You have two more actions you could have taken. Um, if you Can have I a rain. somebody with an arrow? Yes. All right. Let me... I didn't know what the initiative was. Roll some numbers correctly. Misses. Does a one hit? It does not. And in All fact, right. you fumbled. Um, which uh, I'll just say that you... Uh, you slip and fall and all the blood and ick and everything and all the chaos and you drop your weapon and uh, you can either move uh, or attack next turn if that person survived if they're dead never mind uh, but you cannot do both okay moving on the next person is steve all right these guys are going to all attack the same guy all right and, uh, this guy here all right here comes guy number one that misses Okay, guy number two. Ugh. Misses. Guy number three, don't disappoint me. Oh, guy number Misses. three. Oh, man. Okay. Uh, yeah. Dodgy fellows. John, you're up next. Okay. Right, you're, you're up, John. I get four attacks? Uh, three. Uh, you had somebody three. die okay. as they were climbing up. That misses. Let's roll on with the same character. Uh, yeah, unless their stats are different, you know, and however you want to do it. That one hits. Oh, well, they are. Nice. All right. Let's see. This might be a, this might be a wash. <laughs> really good Vikings. Oh, man. Okay. Uh, you can roll your damage again. Oh, wait. No, it did it automatically for you. I was wrong. Yeah. Two and five and seven. Okay, seven, so. 
he is still alive. Anybody else? No, I don't have any more. All right, the next person is Caleb. You have two survivors. Oh. Uh, the bad news is that it sounds like Valhalla is calling. Uh, I think I'm going to stab him. All right. I want to stab my foes. So... You want, to, you want the one that is obviously wounded? Oh yeah, no, is that a nat me. one? No. That's a that's nat one. Na na yes, that's yeah. totally a nat one. Uh, you, yeah. uh, you drop your weapon. Um, so you'll need to Don't either matter. move or attack on my next turn. Alright, well, uh, in that case... Uh, you guys have luck tokens. In real. Yeah, can I... What does that do? Yeah. I would like it to be It gives you lucky. advantage, and you can roll it twice. Okay, uh, do I roll all my rolls again, or just one of the rolls? You just have one luck token, so you would just, uh... Yeah, it's, but it's a gauntlet, so yes, yeah, you can do all of them. And, uh, somebody did that before, and if you didn't do that for all your characters... This is a gauntlet, so it's weird. I think it's Alex. Whoever used a luck token, you can use it for all your characters to reroll if you want. Uh -huh. Nice. I don't have okay. any luck tokens, though. Very interesting. I... Still got both mine. You just have one. You only have a luck uh... token. I only I didn't use any luck tokens. Uh, that was somebody else who used it on one of theirs. Okay. You can only hold one. Oh, isn't it like one per character for the gauntlet? I don't know. Yeah, you Did just I... use one, and then everybody gets to have it. Everybody All right. Gets to use it. Well, Afton got an 18 there. All right. Let's take out the weak one. Um, so you kill one of them. You manage to kill one of them. Aha! All right. And where's your light now? They're about to I show you. Fading oh, from no. his eyes. This is a 14 hit. Uh, that depends who you're talking to. Uh, one of your level zeros, Caleb. Oh, it, it super hits. Okay. Uh, then you, that level zero will take two damage, and then uh, another level zero of uh, of um, of uh, John. John, you'll you'll take two damage. And then there's one more. Ooh. And then, John, one of your level zeros will take five damage. And this guy can't do anything. So he's just going to stand and pray and shout litanies of hate at the, at the, at the infidel here. All right, uh, we're back to Alex. Stop, what about the dead? Uh -oh. If there's any, if there's any room in like the front line, uh, I'd like my guys to kind of take those places and fight. Cause we're tough as, yeah, we're I, tough as. Can I know. swap with him? I apologize. Yes, uh, you can. You can, because I'm having them do it now. I messed that up because I'm thinking about swords and wizardry. But you can fill this in because they were four abreast. So I'm, I'm sorry. But yeah, you can. Sure. Okay. You can have another character as well fill in here. I can even like kind of open a little space there. I'll, it should be two, but I was thinking about swords and wizardry. Okay, all of uh, my two toughest dudes, Gerb and oh god, what's this other guy's name? Gerb and Lange. They'll take the spots that are open, and I'll fire the bow as well. Let's see how these rolls go. Probably do that before you move. Uh, I don't think you can b fire a bow at an enemy at near, but oh no, I mean, I'm but you do it before you move. Oh, okay, back. sure. So I see a 16 there, 1, 2, 3, 14 hits, so you do 8 and 6. Nice. Which one are you shooting at? Um, I guess we'll direct all our attacks at the guy furthest on the right. With Caleb, or, since sorry, he's about to die. Right. <laughs> yeah. Or, well, actually, that would be this one right here. Uh, okay, so 8 and 6 is, uh, alright. Uh, oh, he's dead. I'm just moving hey, their bodies out of the way. Um, at this, I'm also going to do a morale check. Can we spend luck to make you reroll dice? Ooh, that's a pretty high one. <laughs> <laughs> they have the a. It's weird. I guess they. I thought they actually uh, noted it, but it's not on here. join us at Valhalla. Well, anyways, I think he would fail. They would fail their morale check, so uh, they are going to try to flee with the lives they have out the back entrance. Um, 
So we can mm. help drops? <laughs> you know, you can, um... Uh, if you run after them, you'll have to make a dexterity save with the caltrips. I have, uh, a, I have a question. Uh, those guys who were previously dying on our caltrops and stuff, uh, aren't they supposed to be, like, tied up and gagged? No, no, you have those in this room. They're still tied up and gagged. Gotcha. So these Did are just take... other monks participating in the... Yeah. Did they take killers. damage again going over the caltrops? Oh, after no, I don't access think so. them. Do they take tetanus damage? So, uh, so the next person I think is, uh, who's next in the order? It's Alex. I just won. Okay. So it's Steve. Okay. So you're out of combat. Now here's what you can do as a group, anyone running after them, you can do that, but you have to, because you're running and it's like in this dark corridor with candlelight and everything, you'll have to save against the cow trucks. So anybody that's running after them can do that. Anybody firing a missile weapon, you can just do that now. What if we did plan A, plan C, same as plan A, and go through the courtyard and cut them off? Yeah, you can do Avoid that. Avoid the traps. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that sounds better. Is anybody going to fire a missile as they flee? Yeah, sure, I'll fire one more. Oh, I'm down. down. Anyone yeah, not firing a missile can too. go double near, so you can move 60 feet or twice. Oh, natural 20. Oh, that's a fail. All right, here comes the extra. No, it does. Well, yeah, actually. Yeah. Four. So what's the total damage? Uh, which one of you is? So seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. Oh, goodness. Uh, 13. Describe how you uh, kill this guy as, you, as he flees. All right, so Toki is the same guy who threw it uh, last time, and he whips it, and it hits just behind the uh, the neck through the helmet, and then he looks from across the room and again goes, "Shh." You get a luck token. Uh, let's see here. Uh, they are starting to flee. Anybody that did not fire a weapon, you can move your token and go double. Uh, double your speed, which is 60 feet. I lost my axe. So you can you can basically make it all the way into the courtyard. H whose token though is able to run? Because I don't know. We'll have to like move it here. I'll, uh, I'm not able to run. Fire my missile weapon, so I'll be staying here. Okay. Uh, uh, God, is gonna take one of those bastard swords. You do that. You take a bastard sword. Uh, my person that threw back picked up a sword. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, all right. Okay. I don't know how many people are in the courtyard, but I just moved some tokens over there. Uh, uh, just so everybody can see what's going on. Actually, you can't really. I'll just put a little light here for you all um, that are in the courtyard, because um, otherwise you wouldn't be able to really see. Uh, so you're in the courtyard. I'll tell you what the people in the courtyard yard what you can see it's a big dark empty courtyard there's lights there's lights uh in different places uh flickering candlelight and then here you can see a door anything else you can't make out in the dark from where you are what do you do caleb what do you do Oh, I'm not in the courtyard. Who's in the courtyard? I thought somebody went in the courtyard. I am. Okay, John, you in the courtyard. I think you're the only one. So, John, you're in the courtyard. What do you do from there? I'm by myself? Yes. Well, I probably don't want to be in the courtyard, though. Oh, well, you're already in the My courtyard. My character's going to follow you. Yeah. What's, what's everybody else doing? You're in, everybody else is in the hallway. I want to get to the courtyard. Okay, everybody yeah. goes into the courtyard. All right, here we go. Okay, hey. All right, everybody's in the courtyard. That took two Come turns. On. So, you hear rustling, um, and uh, it's coming from like from in inside of there somewhere. What do you do? Are there any lights? Uh, from where you are, you see uh, l like little candle lights, uh, like uh, sconces that have been put up here. 
One is near a door here against this wall, but otherwise it's dark and you can't I see mean, in the courtyard. In rooms, is it like, does it appear that our ad, our prey is navigating in pitch black? No, they're somewhere inside the building. You can hear them. Yeah, uh, but there are windows, windows, right? Uh, yes, it is it is dark from your end. You don't know if, yeah. if like they're lit on their end. Like from, you know, if you look here and there's some candle over there behind a wall, you don't know. I don't know. I think you can kind of see illumination through windows, in yeah. my experience in real you, life. You 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 can't see anything here, but you hear rustling. Do we want to head to the rustling? And I think we're back at John actually. So, John, yeah, what do we head do? Yeah, the rustling. Okay, um, you head that direction, and uh, everybody can make a um, uh, <clears throat> a wisdom check. A DC 12 wisdom check. Oh, oh gosh, that is now. Almost all my guys have minus three wisdom. <laughs> Who is it? Is it you're the smart guy. Born is a. Got a four. A wise man. It looks like no one has passed yet. You brave. Oh, you brave Vikings. Uh, one person passed. Hey. Caleb, I guess. Hey. Uh, everybody else slams into a stone wall and you take one damage. <laughs> but you do find a door. You used your heads. Literally. Plus one <laughs> to uh, the GM. Yeah. <laughs> All right, let's kick in the door. All right, you do that. You kick in the door now. Uh, I'm going to illuminate because they, uh, they are about to jump out a window. Uh, and this will all come down to a single check. Uh, that was John, so I'm up to Caleb. Caleb, uh, I assume you're trying to stop them from fleeing? Is that the goal? Whoops, hold on, let me pan the camera here. Yeah, I think that's my intention. You need to do a opposed either dexterity or strength check. Otherwise they will flee into the night. You need to beat a seven. Can I reason with them? Uh, sure. Um, as as you're just about to like bolt and, and get them, what do you what do you say? And I would like I'd like to say halt, or we will slaughter our prisoners for the old gods. They do halt. They're like the in fact, it's the monk, and he says, "Please, please, we'll give you anything." We'll give you whatever you need. He actually walks forward to plead with you. And uh, the, the knight is... The knight is like... He's he's like, uh, Father, we have to go. Please, we must go now. And he's like, no, no. Uh, spare my brothers. I, I I will give you everything here. Anything. I would like to point my, my axe at the knight and say, For the good of your charges. Yield. He looks around, you know, he realizes he's going to flee on his own, and on his honor, he draws his blade, and he and he refuses to flee, and he takes a knee and puts his blade point down. I like your choice. <laughs> I don't understand what's going on here. <laughs> Two axes. Did you just kill him? <laughs> they just throw their axes at him. <laughs> All right. Uh, yeah, anybody attacking the knight can do that. Yeah. Everybody can roll all their their stuff Oof. as you kill an innocent man, which we said we were doing. Yeah. <laughs> That's what we're here to do. What one so, does? <laughs> yes. Remember just... that you you have however many survivors worth of attacks yeah. too. So that guy seems like a difficult prisoner. You know, sometimes the best that a flower can do is die. All right. Do we kill him or do I need to get involved? So far, I'm only seeing one attack land. I got uh -oh. a six damage. Use my luck. Four damage. Yeah, you can absolutely use your luck. So that's ten damage. And he stands back and he roars and he says, uh, he's like, Faith is my shield. And, and he just charges into all of you and starts wildly swinging his sword around. Uh, ready to die if necessary. All right, that, that's the final blow that kills him. 
and uh, he dies uh, bravely trying to defend this monk. And the monk, horrified, is like, why would you do this? Why would you do this? And um, he's getting ready to just jump out the window and flee into the night. Yeah, let's let's grab that guy and gag him. Yeah, you, you can easily <laughs> yeah. just grab him I and restrain him. So now you have a bunch of prisoners. Are these slaves? Is this what the purpose of these people are? Yeah. More sacrifices to friends. Yeah, I mean, that seems like a to be determined. We don't have any slave work that needs done or sacrifices that need to be sacrificed quite right. yet. They're they're just kind of commodities at the moment. You, you hear the you noises. Uh, you can hear the noises in the distance of your uh, your your kin as they uh, they assault the uh, the uh, the peninsula of Eastreach and raise the city to the ground, taking for themselves uh, everything else the place has to offer. I assume that you loot this place. Absolutely, yeah. the right away. loot. There is no one else left alive, and if you take the time to search you'll see that you have killed them all uh, and captured the the remainder. And no one comes to aid them. And uh, so, there are... um, One of the monks has a silver rosary worth 20 gold pieces. Uh, Four monks um, have silver holy symbols, 20 gold pieces each. I'll put all this in the results. Uh, there is a gold and red tapestry hanging from the wall where the knights have their swords and armor, which you can loot all of it, which is also worth a great deal. And uh, the tapestry is inlaid with gold worth at least 40 gold pieces. Um, let's see here. Um, there's a marble altar with a red cloth that has two gold cheese chalices worth 40 gold pieces each. Um... You find, and I'm gonna roll for this World of Warcraft style. Is that okay? And it's it's gonna because it's pretty wild. Um, and I don't know if you want to take it. Maybe take it and deface it and change it into whatever. But it's it's a magic shield that you find. Uh, I want to roll for it. Is that okay? And I will roll for it. And I'm gonna count down. Okay? okay. So I got, and it's for whoever. If you're not going to use your you're a sea wolf as your primary then pass on this okay uh, so it goes in this order pass. okay all right so in this order steve uh caleb and alex so i'm gonna roll a d3 d3 okay counting down steve Alex, Alex, you have a, uh, or not Alex, sorry, uh, Caleb. Yes, Steve, Caleb, Alex. Yeah, one, two, three. I don't remember being two. Or, yes, I did it backwards, but I said it, so it's Alex. Sorry, I'm sorry, Alex, and everybody. <laughs> so, <laughs> there is a cache of all of the, the things that the, the abbot has you gathered. You never know who got the shield. <laughs> no, it's Alex. Alex, you have the shield. <laughs> All of the, the stuff that he's gathered in, in the abbot's office is worth another 350 gold pieces. And then you have uh, the shield of the lion. Now, you don't know what that is, but it's a kite shield with a lion on it. Uh, it, uh, it gleams and has this magical glow to it. Um, I will look up what that does for you in a second. But um, anyways... Uh, you find another golden rose worth 80 gold pieces. This is all enough for you to easily make level two with your survivors. So that is, uh, you you all make it back from uh, the raid on the Eastern Reach. And uh, let's see here. When you make it back, you journey back to the Isles. Um, in the ensuing weeks uh, back to the uh, finally to your ancestral mead hall where you celebrate your victories um, look at this little fella <laughs> so, somebody's kid <laughs> that guy's got quite the foot and no arm <laughs> I'm going to be a sea wolf just like you, Papa. 
<laughs> you make it back to I should have left thing. out for the wolves, is what that is. <laughs> Sing tales of the stories of, of, of glory uh, that, that you all found and, and everything. That's the end of just the gauntlet.